Hello Gothic friends, this is Alice and you are in Gothic land. How are you? I hope that you are getting now excited with the end of the year. I hope that you've had a good Christmas and of course uh, during Christmas time we all like to do special things and one of the things I found that English people really like doing is actually reading ghost stories which you know I'm super happy with that because being in the space where I am this is a uh, one of my favorite activities I have never participated in anything like this before in reading ghost stories and one day in the, in the group of horror writers um, um, one of my contacts Lex, Lex H. Jones who you actually know from the channel because I interviewed him together with uh, Liam Pace Hill when we talked about this book at the time and uh, this was um, in the month of May, around the month of May, June, The Old One and the Sea and I, I used this book uh, in one of my classes uh, to teach kids to help them with their English uh, through literature and through interviewing a real authors, I mean real authors, authors that are living authors. Um, so through this interview um, that uh, I got to do because of knowing the Sinister Horror Company and uh, having interviewed GR Park before in the channel, then I got into using this book in class, which the kids loved, by the way. And recently, uh, during the month of November, Lex uh, suggested um, on his Facebook page, thank you Lex for this uh, initiative, it was brilliant. He suggested or he proposed people uh, to read ghost stories uh, for Christmas time, which is a tradition um, that is not completely lost in the UK. It's an English tradition that has its origins in Victorian times. and. I'm just going to quote a couple of things because I think it's super, super interesting how the whole reading of ghost stories starts and how I came to be part of this now, this year, in 2021, among other writers, horror writers. Uh, for me, it's been an experiment and it's been a wonderful experience and something I would love to do again and I'm sure that other people would like to do. And it's something that goes very well with the Gothic because it encourages um, people to mm, remember our folklore, uh, remember where we come from, but also to be creative, create your own stories uh, and share them, which is a different experience altogether, something that I've never experienced before and is wonderful. Uh, so the origins of this tradition, before I get into explaining a little bit more about this project of, of Lex, um, it's very interesting that Probably most of you are familiarized with A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. That was written in 1843, the first edition. And you are probably all very familiarized with Ebenezer Scrooge. And we've got thousands of adaptations in the cinema, cartoons, uh, but we never get tired of these stories. The one thing that they all have in common is the ghost thing which is the thing is one of the ghosts uh, sorry is one of the the literary monsters that i'm more fascinated with um if you've been following me for a little bit i've not really talked about the ghost here i've been doing presentations and i've been doing a lot of research over a lot of uh, years and i have a video about supernatural where i talked about the ghosts in there but in in the spanish uh, video so is something I need to work more on and now that we have this excuse of having had having done these readings uh, from each other I think it's a very good way of digging out a little bit more the tradition and why we still have this fascination with ghosts and not just the ghost as um, the typical image of the ghost that you you know the, 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 the sheet or or this energy of these kind of hologram view that we can have but it's also everything that this ghost detonates in our brains in our perception the horrors that we perceive from everyday stories and uh, the presence of Santa uh, a, a, a Christmas that could have gone wrong and um, all these stories that that uh, include all the fears that we may have around these moment of the year as well because it coincides with the solstice of winter uh, when people actually 
and get affected a little bit by the weather. In some countries, obviously, in others, it, it is summer in at Christmas time. But it's true that atmospherically, uh, a ghost story um, at Christmas is kind of very effective. Of course, we have Halloween, but Christmas has different connotations. And it coincides with this transition, as I said, of the winter solstice. And why it started telling stories goes back to Victorian times is precisely because people, when they finished work, uh, they went home, it was dark very early. If you've ever lived in the UK or if you spend time in the UK, uh, if you're a foreigner like me, it's pretty shocking how winter can be this thing uh, that is, is, you only have like two or three hours of daylight. If you get up late, um, it's almost night time by, by four o'clock, it's already dark. So you only have like a few hours of the light. And it's a light that is very dark, that is very grayish. It's got this tint of, of um, like a gray layer because of the clouds, the fog, the, you know, the, the environment, uh, the weather, you know, the, the pressure, the air, all these things that make the weather look this foggy and this kind of film uh, setting almost that, that we in other countries we see only on TV because we can't experience this kind of fog in places like in Spain. Although I have to say that the last few days at Christmas they've been very foggy uh, the days have been very foggy around about uh, here uh, where I live and even the kids were like oh this feels really Christmassy because of that. So the environment, the atmosphere, the weather can actually have an impact. So you can imagine that all this triggered this ghost storytelling at Christmas time and that's what happened in Victoria, Victorian times and it continues and probably started before then uh, when you know humanity as, as we are we've always had this necessity since the beginning since the origins of telling stories around the campfire at night for the same reasons it's to a moment of socializing we can't do anything else because it's dark outside and before going to bed let's tell stories um, Someone who actually talks about these, and, and I would like to encourage you to read that, is Tara Moore, an assistant professor of English and Elizabethan, in, at Elizabethan College. Uh, and she's also an author of Victorian Christmas in print. And she actually says this quote I want to use here. The long midwinter nights, men folks had to stop working early and they spent the leisure, leisure hours huddled close to the fire. So in a way, when English people meet, that's the kind of thing that they like doing at Christmas time. They like getting together and doing this. So this is like the preface of why this event has happened. Because of this tradition, some people still do this. And nowadays with internet and with uh, being able to have this contact with other people around the world, it's kind of easy to gather people online even to do these kind of events. I feel honored of having had the opportunity of taking part of this. So what I want to present you here, and uh, this is a collection that is also shown in different people's websites. And um, the one person who's been putting all the videos together and we have to really, really thank for is being George Daniel Lee, who has been the guy uh, tuning the videos and putting the intro and, and the ending and it's all in his channel. So one of the things I want you to do is to please, please check all these authors. They all have different styles. They all have different books out in the market. So go check them out. Uh, I will post the links to their to the websites if they have them or references, whatever it is that they have for you to follow them. So I really encourage you to read them, to buy their work because what you have here is a sample of our work. It wasn't intended to be, it was something to, an activity to be a group activity, but then what the heck, you know, if we're here, we enjoy each other, we also want, or I think it's fair that uh, we share with the rest of the people, the rest of the world, uh, this activity, how much fun we've had reading it. It was been great because we've also made friends uh, some people couldn't actually make it for different reasons, but I'm sure next year we might have the opportunity of uh, working and, and exchanging stories again. 
it's a safe environment as well to do these because it's among friends, there's not pressure, even though we had some technical issues and, and questions. It's been a lot of fun, at least on, on my part, it's been a lot of fun. So the 10 writers that I ended up doing these are, I'm giving you the names, please go and check them. Go and see their work, they sell their stuff in Amazon, but they also have their own pages, some of them. So go and check them out. And I'm going to give you the names, but you're going to find them on the list here. So we have John McNee, Andrew Frodenberg, Simon Beswick, Danny Brown, J.R. Park, Lex Jones, Matthew V. Brockmeyer, Charlotte Bond and uh, George Daniel Lee and myself, which I feel really happy and really glad of having been um, having given the opportunity of being part of this. So I hope you really, really enjoy it. I know that we just kind of finished Christmas, but we still haven't finished the month of December. We're still within this aura of Christmas glow, uh, ghostly end of the year. We have to wrap up what we've done this year. And why don't you just cuddle up with our stories, listen to them and start planning your readings for next year. If you like these stories, you want to contribute, you want to help the horror community, this is a very good chance for you to get new books for next year and also to support new writers that are out there sharing fantastic stories with the world. So I hope you've had a nice Christmas. I hope you have a, a very good end of the year. Happy New Year and happy ghostly reading. See you very soon.